What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another NHL DFS puck drop. I know it's been a while, uh, I think like three weeks, but uh, the 14-game slate seemed the perfect time to jump back on, and I always truly appreciate the support that you guys have given on these videos uh, this season. Um, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. If you are new to this video, uh, hit like. Maybe throw your favorite uh, DraftKings uh, NHL DFS play in the comments below. Uh, I always love hearing your favorite values or favorite plays because um, some of the plays that I'll talk about, you might, you might already know about, right? Um, and also remember, a 14-game slate, you don't have to play the classic slate. You can play tiers. You can play the showdowns. You can play the turbos. Sometimes those are less daunting uh, from a cash player than a 14-game slate. But I know... Uh, GPP guys out there, I know you guys and girls, you guys love these huge slates because you can just stack away. So let's get into the slate. Um, the center position, per usual, is absolutely loaded, right? Um, and, I, and I can't not mention these guys. Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid, and Nathan McKinnon. I honestly feel um, this is just like a, a quick caveat about NHL DFS. Um, I love NHL DFS. This year has been so much different because of these three players. Um, every time they're on a slate, they are, they take up, you know, a majority of the ownership, at least playing one of them does um, because there's still decent value, but the upside of guys that have 20, 30 point upside is just so hard to pass up you are willing to take their floor game of 10 or 12 or 15, even mm -hmm. at those prices, because if Austin Matthews scores two goals and has five shots on goal, it's really hard to make that up. So obviously on a 14 game slate, there's more paths to making it up, but on these smaller slates, it's really hard to avoid, you know, putting one of these guys at least in your lineup. So uh, I love all three of them here. Um, I think because I like uh, Miko Rantanen and his form and his price the most uh, at the winger position, that steers me towards liking Nathan McKinnon just for the correlation piece. Um, obviously, Austin Matthews' goal scoring is insane. And Connor McDavid can just do it all. So um, you're, you're really splitting margins with those three. I think when you think about which one you want to play, uh, I think Matthews and McKinnon are probably the safest for cash. And I think then from there, you decide who you are correlating, right? And you don't have to correlate these guys with people. Um, but I think that is a, a route you could definitely go. Um, so uh, getting past the top three studs here, we have Sam Bennett. Now, when, when I was like looking, you know, obviously Sam Bennett used to play for Calgary, was sometimes on the fourth line, third line, didn't get a lot of run. And even actually when he did, he is a high volume shooter, actually, like average, I think, like two to three shots on goal, right? Um, in his last one, two, three, four, five games, he has 26 shots on goal. His floor is 16 DK. Uh, and not only that, but he's playing like close to 20 minutes of ice time a game since moving to Florida. His price now is 6,100. Uh, three games ago, it was 3,700. Normally, I don't like to say, um, let's just jump up and continue to pay this price take for him. And he might finally have topped out, but I can't not mention the guy. He is an absolute insane form and I've played him almost every game for the last five or six games. So I've been riding this streak, which has been phenomenal. Um, I also really like Eric Sinek, uh, one of my wild players who's been also in great form and, and for 3.6, uh, I know it's sometimes tough to give up that center position for a value play, uh, but he has 12 shots on goal in his last three games. He, his last um, five games, six, honestly, 60K, 14 and a half, 15.8, eight, 11.3 and 7.8. You would take the floor there of six, even at 3.6, but you would love to see those double digits that he's had three goals in his last five games. So really like Eric Sinek there at, the center position. All right, let's move to the winger position. Uh, Mitch Marner and Miko Rantanen are at the top of my list for me. Um, again, it kind of goes back to what I just mentioned at the center position. If you really like Austin Matthews, I'd highly suggest using Mitch Marner 
as a correlated piece, or maybe you, you want to use Austin Matthews, but you want to use Miko Rantanen because you want to cover both of the team, the lines, right? You don't want to get like destroyed when uh, Colorado one goes off. So you get a little bit of piece of it. Uh, I think that's more of a cash game approach than GPP GPP. You would see somebody just go all in on Colorado or go all in on Toronto. So um, Miko Rantanen though, since coming back from the COVID, uh, is coded COVID leave uh, per se when he's on the protocol list uh, in the, in the two games since returning, he has a combined 53 DK uh, and 10 shots on goal. Uh, so, I mean, the guy's form is awesome. And, and remember both those games were against San Jose and who does he play tonight? San Jose. So I uh, love Miko Rantanen at 8.3 Taylor Hall. Uh, I just like, I, I just want to say for a second, you know, sometimes when you play for a team, it just doesn't work out, right? Just the connections and whatever was going on at Buffalo. Like, obviously, Buffalo's been terrible this year. They There's not a lot of things going well. And then you send him to an elite playoff contending team like Boston, put him on the second line, actually takes pressure off of him, right? Um, in his last, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, and actually you can go a little bit further, but in his last seven games, he has one game of 2.6, but other than that, he has an 11.4 and it, he has the shot volume. He has games of five, four, five, four, six shots on goal. Um, he's has goals in three of his last five games. I just think 6.1 in a matchup with New Jersey is a really nice spot for him to continue to produce at that kind of level. So um, Taylor Hall, uh, hats off to you. I know it's been a very frustrating season with the Sabres, but I'm glad to see um, a lot of positivity and a lot of fantasy value, honestly, coming in Boston. I think he got even subbed 5K when he's when he's playing for Boston so, or um, Buffalo. Um, all right, Montreal's uh, stud, one of their best prospects, Cole Caulfield uh, at 3.9. Finally, I think I think he went like four point over four point six in his last matchup, um, but showed up with a game winning goal um, for Toronto uh, against Ottawa in their last matchup. He's probably a little bit more GPP, but I was like, oh, I kind of want to mention him. I I, I think um, he we know he's like elite talent, and like next year when you see him priced at like five six k or even more, if he's just dominating, then don't be surprised. But um, then let's get down to somebody that I have been using a ton is Barbanov. Uh, he is came over in a trade with uh, in the Toronto trade. Um, he has since playing on a regular basis the last four games for San Jose. He's had games of 16.3, 1.3, which obviously isn't great, uh, 6.3, and 15.8 at dead minimum price. So, and, and not only that, but he's skating on the top line and skating on the top power play unit. Now on Sunday, he was actually demoted to the taxi squad for um, San Jose, but that was a move um, that likely was just temporary. And it sounds like he should actually be, be back up with San Jose uh, before um, today's game against, uh, against Colorado. So just make sure you check on that. And I would assume he'd be in the same role, top line, top power play, but for 2.6, basically dead minimum, it's really hard to fail at that price tag. So all right, especially with that kind of ice time and opportunity. The last spot here is our defender position. Um, Jakob Chikrin. I mean, like, I try to watch, you know, at least one NHL game a night when I have the opportunity to. And I don't get a lot of opportunities to see Arizona. But I do a lot of times watch the highlights and things like that. And, and, and Chikrin he's not a defender that just stays at the blue line, right? He gets up to the dot. He gets up to the edge of the circle. And that's what creates such a great DFS, you know, player out of him. His shots on goal, his block shots. He's just so aggressive. Um, here are his shot on goal totals uh, in his most recent games. Three, five, five, six, five, six. So in one, two, three, four, five, five of those games already, he has a 10 point floor just based on shots on goal. Now don't forget his upside that he has when he scored two goals and had an assist on February 26th against San Jose and had 43 DK. 
Like he has that upside, right? He had a hat trick um, like a month ago. So 7K is not egregious for uh, Jakob Chikrin. Now, I found myself paying up for defender less this year because of McDavid and Matthews and, and their prices are just crazy, right? But I, I can't fault you at all for playing Chikrin. He has a 10-point floor and he has immense upside. Now, somebody I really like here. Now, I, not that I don't like these guys between Chikrin and Falk, right? I just, I'm probably not paying up for it. Like, I like Makar. I like um, Adam Fox. I like Theodore, Petrangelo. I like those guys. But I'm going to find myself probably falling more into the 4K range or below. Uh, so, we go to Falk. Um, Tory Crew continues to be out for St. Louis. Um, and also Vince Dunn, somebody else that's been on the top power play unit in the past. And what has happened to Falk in, since those absences? Uh, first, listen to the time on ice. 27 minutes, 30 minutes, 29 minutes, okay? Right there is opportunity cost at its maximum level, right? Okay, in those three games, he's had 11.8 DK, 9.9, and 11.8. And honestly, I think those results, those results are without an assist or a goal. So I think he's in a good spot at home against Anaheim to play that many minutes, have those peripheral stats of shots on goal blocks, but also have more assist equity in a really phenomenal matchup. Um, Eric Carlson, I mentioned him in the past um, at 4.4, anytime he's around this 4K range, his upside is still too high to not consider. And I also really like a guy like Eric Carlson or Brent Burns. Honestly, he's only 5.2. I like him as well. Um, that these guys are going to likely have be in play for the block shot bonus against a team like Colorado, who's just so aggressive offensively, but also leaves them um, vulnerable on the other end. So really like Eric Carlson at 4.4. Alex Galagoski, guy, another guy that I've been playing, you know, he's finally over the 4K mark, but it, it's deserved, right? Games of 11.2, 7.8, 12.8, 14.5, 19.5, 14.7. Um, he's another one that, you know, when you play with Chikrin and you play with that Arizona team, they they do allow their defenders to get involved offensively. So I like him at 4.3. And then uh, the diaper dandy at 2.7 is going to be – now there's going to be obviously a lot of other plays that come out throughout the day. Like I really like Brady Shea as well. Um, for Carolina at 3K, um, just didn't have enough spots to mention him. He's been in phenomenal form uh, with just blocking or, you know, a lot of shots on goal recently. But um, Joel Edmondson here at 2.7 is always in play for the block shot bonus. Um, you know, he had the block shot bonus a couple of games ago, but in a high event game with Toronto, you'd expect, you know, the block shots to be in play, maybe an assist and some shots on goal. So for 2.7, you can't really go wrong from there. So thanks again for listening, guys. I hope you enjoy uh, the puck drop. Check out my uh, daily prop video for Price Picks and Monkey Night Fight, which I have NHL plays on there as well. We have MLB content up. We have uh, the Tilt City Show. We have uh, so many great things at our channel. And there's stuff that you can listen to literally every single day. So make that a routine that you come to FSI and check out our free content. All right. Thanks a lot. See ya.